Hey everybody, how's it going? A lot of you have been asking me to react to this video, taking a look inside Steam Deck. Steam Deck looks like, again, I'm very ignorant when it comes to this stuff, it looks like a little portable gaming system that is based on Linux, which is really cool. I like seeing more devices based on more open standards, and this is probably going to be way more than just a gaming system based on the amount of power it has, and also based on the fact that it is actually using some sort of open standard. This is, again, this is not like you buy a Game Boy and you get something that's only going to play what you put in it. It's really cool that it's running an open operating system. Now, I really don't keep up with this stuff that much because I am not a gamer. I kind of hit my peak 22 years ago when I beat Necron in Final Fantasy IX. I figured I should quit while I'm ahead, and that's exactly what I did. I dabbled in Warcraft 1 to 2 from 1996 through 1999, and I played a little bit of Dota from 2004 to 2006, where I was actually good at it, and, well, yeah, I've con I lost my skills considerably in the 14 years since that. But anyway... Let's talk about this little device. So apparently they've made a teardown video on how you open it and how you can repair it and work on it. And because this is, is actually using an open operating system, it is attracting the type of people that care about right to repair to purchasing it. And many of you have asked me to, to just kind of give my thoughts and opinions on this video. So let's dive into it and uh, go ahead. Hi, this is a video about opening up a Steam Deck to replace one or more of the components inside it. Specifically, we're going to cover the thumbsticks and the SSD. In one way, this is a how-to video, but in another way, it's a why you really shouldn't do this video. That's because even though I it's don't understand PC, the whole or, like why you shouldn't do this video. I mean, why wouldn't I want to be able to open up my device to service it if it has parts that have wear and tear? Like joysticks have wear and tear. SSDs have limited read and write cycles. At one point, you will not be able to read and write to that SSD anymore. So I will do that at some point because I own it and I want my device to actually work again. It will be once you've received your Steam Deck and you have every right to open it up and do what you want. We at Valve really don't recommend that you ever open it up. The Steam Deck is a very tightly designed system and the parts are chosen carefully for this product with its specific construction. So they aren't really designed to be user swappable. Okay, so you have used very specifically designed parts, but I don't understand what you mean by it's not designed to be user swappable. I don't care if it's designed to be user swappable. You're, you're, you've created a device that has parts that develop wear and tear over time, and it costs enough money that I am going to want to maintain it rather than purchase a new one. So I don't really care if you designed it to be user swappable or not. I'm, I'm going to open it if I feel like it. Opening up and replacing parts might mess things up like profoundly. No shit. For example, if you damage the battery, the whole thing could catch fire later, which would be bad. So be forewarned and leave this kind of thing to professionals unless you really feel like taking big risks with your property and with your life, which could end. Oh, okay, if okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. What? You do this wrong. Just saying. If your life, are you fuck? Okay, no, I can't let that go. Okay, so as someone who has blown up lithium ion batteries before, Let's go over what that will actually look like. So this is real footage, not some staged BS. Uh, this is uh, so someone who used to work here who was doing a repair. And I, okay, admittedly, this is my fault. So he has a tool that he was using to get under the batteries. He had his own way to do it. And I took his tool to use it to work on a MacBook Air to remove the bezel from it. And I just so happened to bend it and put it back without replacing it because I'm a horrible employer. But that's, a t again, another topic for another video. So he winds up poking the battery and with the tool that I screwed up, and he punctures it. This is what it actually looks like. Again, like the idea that you're going to lose your life over this, are you kidding? Look at how much time he has to get away from that. Okay, now, now you could finally see that it's red hot over there. You could see, if I full screen it, I can't really zoom here, but that is red hot. The only way you're going to kill yourself on this is after, the ex after that happens, you have no instincts whatsoever. So, like, look, the moment he sees a little smoke come out, See what he does? Look, he moves away from it because he has a basic concept of self-preservation. And then he, he distances himself away from it. And then once there's a smoke cloud, he runs away. If you're the type of person that's going to see this happening and go, you know what? Let me take my head, let me take my face and mash it right into that piece that looks like it's going on fire. Yeah, maybe you're going to end your life. But the idea that you're actually going to end your life from this, I think, is horribly hyperbolic. And again, I'm not saying that lithium batteries don't have the potential to be dangerous. I'm just saying that this is what is going to happen when 99.9999999% of you puncture a lithium battery. You're going to look at it, you're going to go, oh shit, and you're going to get away from it long before it actually does something to you. When he says that you can kill yourself with a battery, 
it really does remind me of this the, the, this scene in, in Austin Powers over here. Like, th this, this is how you're gonna get a lithium ion battery killing you is this. Like this, right here. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Again, I'm not saying lithium ion batteries are not dangerous. I'm just saying that if you have it on your desk and you are working on the product in front of you and you wind up doing something stupid, it's going to look more like the Austin Powers steamroller than, you know, the, the uh, sniper and Medal of Honor taking you out the moment you walk outside kind of thing. You, you have a good amount of time to get away from it. Uh, I, again, I'm not above having batteries explode on me before, and uh, I'm fine. I've actually dealt with batteries from electric bicycles, from crappy companies like Unit Pack Power that sold me batteries that were not what I had paid for. I had purchased 35 E-cells. They gave me knockoff junk. And uh, that, that, in, that setup was 400 cells. Not one cell, 400 going on fire. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still here. So just uh, keep this in mind. Um, so I'm not saying they're not dangerous because I know that somebody in the comments is going to completely straw man what I say here, regardless of the fact that I'm specifically commenting on it and say, Lewis said lithium ion batteries are not dangerous. No, that's not the case. It's just will kill you again. This is, this is the reality of what's going to happen when it, it, you mess up. So let, let's continue with this. Also, the warranty doesn't cover any damage that you do. How okay, I like what they said there. What they said there, they didn't say that the warranty is void if you open it. They said that the warranty is void if you damage it. And this is a point of contention for a lot of people that hate me in r slash Apple. And they say, Lewis is not fighting for this. Lew right, what Right to Repair is really about is he wants the warranty to still remain even after he works on it. That actually has nothing to do with Right to Repair. That's been the law since 1977. If you open your device and you change out the hard drive with the solid state drive, you have not voided your warranty. Even if there was a warranty void if removed sticker. You void your warranty when you damage it. And the burden of proof is on the manufacturer to prove that you damaged your product. The burden of proof is not on you to prove that you did not damage the product. If you open your device and you replace the SSD, and then eight months later your graphics card dies, that's not on you because you opened it and you know uh, tampered with some warranty void or removed sticker. So I like the fact that they're using the proper phrasing over here and the proper vocabulary. Warranty does not and should not cover when you break your own device, but warranty is not something that you can void simply because you chose to open it. However, having said all that, we also wanted to make this video to simply show you what's inside the Steam Deck. Taking things apart and putting them back together is cool, especially powerful handheld gaming computers. Please note, the screws that secure the housing are what's called self-tapping screws, and they're embedded in plastic bosses. They can be removed and reinstalled, but it's much easier to strip or over torque screws of this type compared to standard ones. So be aware that they're very sensitive and either the screws or the housing can be damaged. A torque wrench does help. There's prevent nothing wrong with that. Everything he said there seems Opening to the make case sense. immediately weakens it and makes the product less drop resistant. There's no way to avoid this. So just know that the structural integrity of your deck will be lessened somewhat by doing any of this. I find that incredibly difficult to believe. I'm open to being proven wrong. I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I'm a guy that had to cheat on his chemistry regions to get out of high school that flunked out of college. But the idea that simply opening it and putting it back together ruins the structural integrity in some way where it's more likely to break when you drop it, my bullshit detector is going off. And if you're somebody who is smarter than me when it comes to mechanical or structural engineering or anything like that, or actually, you know, paid attention in school, by all means, do correct me below and give me some citations so I can kind of read up on it myself. But my bullshit detector is going off big time hearing that. Even if there was some sort of effect to the structural integrity because you opened it, I can't imagine it would be on a level that's high enough that you would ever notice or on a level that's high enough that it would actually be worth it for you to not open the device and fix it when there's something wrong with it versus buy a new one. That there's something about that that just strikes me as not right. Static electricity can easily break your Steam Deck permanently. Basically, if a spark jumps from you to one of the integrated circuits on the board, it'll probably fry some of the parts forever. If you're unfamiliar with preventing electrostatic discharge, you should probably stop doing this and turn it over to a pro. I believe that they're putting that there because they uh, they want to avoid people 
going onto a rug, you know, rubbing their socks back and forth and then touching things. Do I use an anti-static wrist bracelet? No, I don't. Uh, but I, again, I also don't wear the anti-static wrist bracelet on my glove. This is funny. I'm surprised they didn't do another take of this video. Again, if, if, you, if you, I'm sorry, if you're going to be telling people that they, there's a chance they can kill themselves opening up their shit, you, you can't have, you, you can't do this. You, you just, you can't do this if you're actually telling me and expecting me to For take you seriously when you tell me that I may die if I work on my product and then you're putting this thing over your glove. It's not enough to put a little bit of text on the screen afterwards. Um, what I do is I go to my office where, you know, again, I don't have a bunch of carpeting in the office. I touch something that's grounded on the table before I work and I'm intermittently touching something that is grounded as I'm working. So just in case I get a little bit of static built up in me that I'm dissipating it by touching many of the numerous items on my desk that are grounded on a regular basis. I do not wear an anti-static wrist strap because I'm constantly moving around. If I need to pick up a donor board, if I need to go pick up a chip, if I feel like getting my water to drink it, I don't feel like being chained to the table and I haven't killed things via ESD before. Now, if again, if you are working on something from like 30 or 40 years ago, those devices can be a little bit more static sensitive. And also, if you're someone who's just completely inexperienced and you, you don't have that habit built into your head of touching something that's grounded on a regular basis as you're working, uh, then sure, do the, do the anti-static wrist strap. But for F's sake, don't attach it over your glove. This is just, this is, this is kind of like, uh, I'm trying to remember, there was this one website that did a p i think it was the verge building a pc a while ago and this kind of goes up there with that charge you should probably stop doing this and turn it over to a pro first remove these four screws then these four note that they're different sizes so start keeping your screws organized to help you when it comes time to reassemble everything after the screws are out you just need to pry the case open try not to break a fingernail that hurts Note that this video shows pre-production hardware, and there will be some differences between what you see here and the Steam Deck that you own. This is the battery. Before proceeding, it's important to disconnect it. Do that by unplugging these wires here. The first component we're going to replace is the thumbstick. This part is easy to remove. Be aware that the whole assembly is custom, the stick, the board, and the cap. Replacing these will require matching the custom parts exactly. Stay tuned in the coming months for a source for replacement parts, thumbsticks, SSDs, and possibly more. Lift this latch. Coming months. Unplug the flex cable. Hmm. I don't like there being lag. Here. Remove these three screws. And then take the stick assembly out. That's it. Now just reverse all that to put another one back in. That seems Let's easy. move on to the SSD. We don't recommend replacing the included drive. What we do recommend for increasing your storage capacity is the handy microSD card slot. So much easier and plenty fast. Please note, before attempting an SSD replacement, an off-the-shelf SSD could cause problems. One, power consumption. An off-the-shelf SSD can draw more power than the original drive. They're not bullshitting there. Uh, there are these SSDs that are aftermarket for the A1502 and A1388 MacBook that are run and they're made by Transcend, they're, they're reliable. I would say they're far more reliable than the garbage that you can get at OWC. That being said, they do run considerably warmer than the original ones. And th there's a lot of cases of that, which is one of the reasons I think it would be best to not use proprietary connectors and proprietary parts to begin with, because it would give you a larger smorgasbord of potential options for yourself. But he's not he, hes not just fear-mongering there. And this is something that I would be concerned about, particularly when you're dealing with such a tiny device where, you know, heat that's created by the SSD could, it's, it's going to be literally sitting right next to the CPU in a device that has very limited space for cooling. Which could cause overheating and reduce battery life. Two, electromagnetic interference. Our SSD is located very close to our wireless module and was specifically chosen and tested to not interfere with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. An off-the-shelf SSD might have a different emissions pattern and could compromise wireless performance. Three, mechanical. We place components on the motherboard underneath the SSD, and a different one might mechanically interfere with these components, especially during vibration. Four, assembly. At least one screw which holds down the thermal module onto the APU is also used to hold down the shield can. Removing this screw can impact the thermal performance of the thermal module. Here we go. 
First, we're working on removing this outer shield. As you've just seen, these two screws come first. Two more screws under here. Okay, now you can actually remove the shield. But be super careful to not disturb the whole thermal setup. Very important to make doubly sure that the battery is disconnected before proceeding. I like that. Now, disconnect the drive. Note that all Steam Deck models use the M.2 connector for internal storage, including the 64 gigabyte model. To actually remove the SSD, remove one more screw here. That's it. We haven't filmed the entire reassembly process, but as we mentioned with the thumbstick, it's basically doing this whole thing again, but backwards. Remember, if you have followed these directions correctly, you've done absolutely none of the preceding steps. But you're more informed now about what's inside your Steam Deck. So I like the fact that they show how to open the device. It's one step forward from companies that tell you, don't even bother, we're not even going to show you how, we're not going to do any of that. Um, and I understand that the most likely reasoning that they have for the, for, you know, for the disclaimers that they have is because they're probably just afraid of getting sued. They're afraid of someone, you know, messing with them. They're afraid of people blaming them. I think they're really trying to avoid people blaming them because there's really nothing more annoying than when people don't take accountability and responsibility for their own failures. I've had many customers that bring their own battery to put into their computer. We install their battery. Three months later, they ask if our warranty covers it, and I go, what are you talking about? I mean, you brought your battery. And he's like, yeah, but you installed it. It's like, yeah, but your battery's dying because you bought a $20 piece of crap off of eBay. And they'll go, I can't believe your warranty doesn't cover your battery. And I said, you know, I gave you $100 off because you brought your own battery. And it's like, and you know, you wind up having to come up with these really long disclaimers because you have one out of a thousand people that are dicks. And because you have one out of a thousand people that are dicks, you really do have to come up with, with these disclaimers for, for everybody. And, and, and it sucks. It really does because that one person is going to file a chargeback and say, well, you never told me X, Y, and Z. And it's one of the reasons you can't have nice things. But I think that at some point, somebody's heart was in the right place. I think that they just had either legal or marketing or some head of customer service tapping them on the head and go, hey, man, if you want to do a teardown video, hey, man, if you want to show people how to fix it, you got to say this. Hey, man, listen, we don't want to get 80 phone calls saying this. Hey, we're in the chargeback department. We don't want people constantly bothering us because of this. I think that's the case of it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The comment that I'm honestly the most interested in is the comment where they said that the structural integrity of the device is going to be affected forever if you open it. Again, that, that's just one area where my bullshit detector is going off a little bit, but I would, I'm would i definitely open to being educated by people who know more than me, who have you know just more intelligence and are higher educated than me on that particular item. Even if it is true, what I would be really curious is is it true to the extent that it like like that it actually matters? Is this something where it's going to affect it zero point zero 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 one percent? So technically they're correct, but practically it's bullshit. Or is there actually something to that? I would really just be inclined to believe the former. But uh, do let me know in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.